And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Valley of the Dead King, Hexplore It. And this is a game that I had seen in passing. I believe it's the first in a series of games. The other ones have been on Kickstarter. This may be the only one that's out. There might be more than one out. I'm not sure. But I know this is the first one of this series. It's a role-playing game in a box of sorts, an adventure-style game. And I had heard about it when we did one of our top 10 lists on this of adventure games. And Jeremy came in and talked about it, and I had not heard of it really much. So I went and hunted it down and played through it. Now, I will say, for purposes of this review, that I often try to play games with multiple player counts and such, and in this particular case, I played this one solo uh, multiple times. Uh, a lot of, well, I have yet to beat the game, but I'm sure it can be done! Uh, I've gone online and certainly watched a lot of videos and things about it. But it's a fascinating uh, world for sure. Let's take a slightly deeper look. Now, I'm not going to be, go over every rule of this game, but I want to give you some idea of how it plays. The biggest thing here is character creation. So in character creation, you're going to pick a class, and there is a ton. The cartographer, the tinkersmith, the hunter, the trap specialist, the guardian, the summoner, the shaman. Each one's a certain type, like this is called a sapper, and this one's called a healer. So the oracle, the beast master, the scoundrel, the illusionist, the sorcerer, the nomad, the weaponsmith, the priest, the divine one, the necromancer, the berserker, the brute, the rabble rouser, the elementalist, and the minstrel. All right, so you have all of them. I'll be the, uh, the rabble rouser. That sounds fun. Then there's also, you're going to get one of these races. Elf, troll, shifter, human, lizardman, goblin, gnome, ogre, lumen, gray dwarf, dwarf, orc, centaur, half elf, stone mar, half giant, shade, automaton, demon born, dryad, dragonkin, angel born, pixie, and halfling. I like angel born, so I'll pick this one here. Now, this race is going to modify your stats here. So you have different stats here. So, for example, here I have health. You'll notice there's a number six here, but the Angelborn adds one to that. So I start with seven health, and then five plus three energy from the Angelborn, so that is eight energy total. Then over here I have an attack of three, no bonus to that. A defense of one, no bonus to that. Then I have two special abilities, first mastery and second mastery, impressive belch and rowdy uppercut. This one here is two plus one is three, and one plus two also three. And then you have two skills down, three skills down here, navigate, explore, and survival. And so one plus one is two, one plus zero is one, two plus zero is two. So those are kind of my starting stats. You could pick a name, a favorite opponent, like the angel born their favorite opponent is spirits, and there's other places to write down stuff that you have, and you'll get gold as the game goes by. And in fact, one of the things you can do over the course of this game is you can increase your stats. When you're in town, you can spend, for example, if I want my explore to go up, I can pay three, and now this is a two. I can pay four, and now it's a three. And, you know, you can pay a lot, but so your stats have an upper limit because you can only ever, this one for example started at 1, so if I paid 3, 7, 12, 18, 25, 33, I'm adding to it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times, so the highest this will ever be will be 7. But you can see you can increase all your stats and this is a way to show them. There's also other things and other cards that you can get as the game goes by that will count your stats, but what this does, and this is kind of important, is this takes essentially a way for you to say, I, instead of saying I have a gold sword with iron platinum helmet, this is what that is. There is no really weapons or items. I mean, there's some items in this game, but there's not a whole lot of weapons in this game. And at the best, you, when you fight enemies, you might get some of these cards, which just add one to your stats. And this kind of abstracts it down. And so this is the main feature. This is your board that you're going to use as you play the game. Now, a lot of what goes on in the game is you travel around and you'll have different adventures. And when you travel, you can move cautiously or you can move up to four spaces 
or you can follow rivers or road, which is a little bit safer than that. But every time you're taking your turn and you move, you're going to have a skill phase, and each hero is going to be rolling three dice. These three dice, incidentally, happen to match your skills, navigate, explore, and survive. And in this case, low numbers are better. Ones are the best because you are trying to get equal to your score or lower. So uh, in this case, I'm going to need a seven or less. That's not bad, but I've really maxed that skill out. Each of the skills is very different. Um, if you roll poorly on your wandering skill, then you're going to roll a die and you You'll have another die here, and you will possibly go off course, which is not something that you want to do. You end up roaming. The explore one, you want to roll low on this one because it helps you find gold. You'll just find gold as you walk along. And then the survival one, you want to roll low on that because otherwise you have to feed your people. Otherwise, you're living off the land. And each player is going to have a certain number of food that they're going to have over the course of the game. And that food's going to go up or down as you eat the food and go. And if you start starving, that's a bad thing for you. After players go, they're going to roll a circumstance. So there's a deck of circumstance cards that are going to be up here, and you'll just roll a die and see which number you match. Oh, injured, and draw another card. Not very good. Now, fortunately, if you move cautiously, you can discard the card and draw another one instead of doing anything. Here's some kobolds. You might even, if you land on kobolds, you might have moved cautiously, but you might say, eh, we can fight these guys. We can take them because you might want the rewards from them. Uh, they'll give you many times when you fight monsters and beat them. They'll give you gold, which you can spend in town to increase your stats and even sometimes give you special things or uh, cards off of the special item rewards cards, which will increase your stats. So there's definitely a reason you might want to fight them. And occasionally you'll get to uh, come across a card that says unavoidable and even if you are moving cautiously that will happen to you but there's all sorts of monsters like there's even look a dragon a much more difficult monster to fight and so it's up to players whether or not they're going to you know if you move cautiously you can avoid these but sometimes it just can't be helped and sometimes you'll choose to fight a bad guy when you fight a bad guy, you're using this battle mat here. And here, um, let's say we're fighting the phase beast. I write my health and energy here. This is basically just so you can keep track of how much health and stuff that you're going to be fighting against this creature. In fact, also, depending on how hard you want the game to be, you will add stuff to these. If you playing a starter or easy, there might be some changes. And in fact, the game might tell you to play one where they level, you know, you come across a monster that's a harder level than you might normally have. And when this happens, players are going to be looking at their stats and deciding if they're just going to be making a regular attack or using one of their skills, which is going to cost you energy points, and against the enemy. The enemy is a little bit random, where they will roll a die, and you're going to see what the enemy is going to do to you based on here. They might attack you, they might defend against your attacks, they might do nothing, and you're just going to keep going till you or the enemy is dead. Once the enemy is dead, there's group rewards. Like I said, sometimes it's gold, sometimes it's cards off this pile here, and then you just continue on your merry way. So that's kind of the course of the game. You're going to do your movement for, first, as it shows you here. You'll roll your skills and see what happens. Then you'll do the circumstance. Uh, sometimes there's an event that will happen. And then the dead king is going to move. Eventually, the dead king is going to show up. You're going to be rolling a die. The chance of him showing up increases each turn. And then he starts moving around until he takes over one of the cities on the board and makes it a fallen city. And it's his job to make all the cities fallen. And then after that, he comes after you, and you'll end up fighting him. There are various big giant monsters in the game. The Bandit Prince, well actually the Bandit Prince is not as big as some of the others, like for example, the Gray Slime, which is a pretty nasty thing to fight. Uh, the, here's even a bigger one, the Cryptovern, but eventually you're gonna wanna fight the Dead King himself, itself, whatever self, and beat them. And you'll notice that there is a whole lot more special abilities that the, these big guys can do to you. You beat the dead king, you're the winner of the game. There's other things you can go to the market, all sorts of things you can buy with gold that will do things. You can buy potions to heal yourself, luck stones will let you re-roll, camping gear, uh, the different things will happen based on what city you're in. Hopefully you can find the black market, which has some really cool stuff available. When you land on different runes, various things might happen, and there are shrines and blessings on the board too. So there's kind of all the stuff that you might find in a normal game. Like I said, this has kind of been a, a quick overview of what's in the game. Hopefully it gives you kind of a sense of how it works, but it's an adventure game. You go through as a group, 
walking across the board, trying not to run into trouble, but trying to fight enough trouble to get enough equipment and stuff so that eventually you can fight the evil Death King and win. All right, I have a lot to say here about components. It's such a weird mix in this game. Because, I mean, I like the whiteboards here, although it's really easy for stuff to rub off on them, but not a big deal. I like the whiteboards. I like that all the stats you need are right here. It's not that complicated. Uh, it, lists, it lists what you have here. It's pretty simple. But it drove me crazy when I first played the game. I said, man, I like that of a Berserker. I wish I knew what the Berserker looked like. I'm not kidding. It wasn't until halfway through my second game when I was like, what? The picture of all these is on the back. And I don't, this is kind of cool. I like these pictures. I really wish they had taken the time to put these on the front because you know what? You don't play your game with the, you know, you're flipping it over. And this would have just added so much flavor to the game, I think. I like this artwork and I think it's cool and it adds a lot of ambiance to this world. And with that in mind, are you kidding me? A bunch of plus signs and exclamation points and question marks. Who designed the graphic design of these? And then they're just a bunch of attack and defend plus one. Couldn't you put there, for example, like bold plate of buckler and a little picture of it or something there that would have made it more interesting. And then even then, when you go through and these explores and duels and they tell you what to do, but there's not a lot of pictures there. And then when you fight the bad guys, I showed you those big boards, which are cool. But when I fight tree ants or, um, let's see, a wyvern, a hag, I guess I know what these are in my head for the most part. But What's a silk spider look like? Why can't I see a picture of it on here? I just found that to be kind of a bit of a bummer. The game looks like a math problem. The board itself is okay, even if it does highly remind me of the boards from uh, Duel of Ages. And I do like the fact that there is a ton of information here and it works well. Everything fits in a box with, that comes with markers. It all fits inside that box nice and neatly. And there is the rule book here which is okay. I really wish they had spent more time explaining combat because I found combat to be the most confusing part of the game. I know there's a whole section in here about it, but it just, I had to go on and watch videos online to quite completely understand it. There's also a storybook that comes with this and as you run into various, you know, when you run into these different big bad guys, you can have like a story of what's gonna happen to you. And then there's some story based on some other things that you will have. And in fact, some of the encounters, like I mentioned, the young dragon are in here. But again, you have to kind of turn to this page to notice that. I really wish it had been on the cards itself. So uh, I'm really of a mixed mind about the components of this game. They sure fit a lot into that box, but they did so at the expense of it looking fantastic. Now I find this game has so many things to talk about. And at the end of the day, I've not been so conflicted about my final thoughts on a game as this one in a long time. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. Um, one of the, so I'm just going to be talking about a lot of negatives and a lot of positives and mixing them together here. One of the negatives is the fact that I found that while the game itself was not that difficult to learn, understanding combat, I thought was really, it just, it wasn't intuitive, I think, was the best word for it. And I, fortunately, a lot of people made videos about it online. In fact, Liz Davidson, who's on the Dice Tower, on her channel, posted a very nice overview of it and I watched the entire thing because I didn't want to miss any parts of that and I watched multiple people's to make sure I was getting the rules right when I played through this. But it's kind of a tough board. The actual moving on the map and dealing with encounters and stuff, that's all easy peasy, honestly. It's just that when you get to that, you know, going into town and buying stuff, you know, when you do all that, it's when you get to fighting a creature that I think things kind of slow down. It's not actually that combat's long and arduous, it's just that you got to kind of grasp your mind around it. And that's my second negative, kind of positive about the game, is the game looks and sometimes feels like a gigantic math problem. And it definitely tilts more that way than it does like, ah, run in with swords, bard. You're more like, hmm, okay, I want to do uh, this, and I'm going to play 
I'm going to use this special ability, and you're thinking everything through, right? You're, you're, you're sitting there talking, okay, I'm going to do this and that and this, and we're going to, what could the bad guy do? If he does this, we're fine. If he does that, we're in trouble. And you're just trying to kind of work all that out, and oftentimes it feels like a spreadsheet, and honestly, the lack of art doesn't help that. You know, many times these games kind of hide the spreadsheet stuff. I mean, you know, Dungeons and Dragons has had nerds doing math for years now. But this one doesn't hide it at all. It's just right out there in the open. It's just sheets and stuff. In fact, the name of the game is Hexplore It. What? You're, are you trying to make it sound boring? The Valley of the Dead King is a much better, a much better name. But anyhow, I digress. So that, that's kind of problematic. On the flip side, like I said, the artwork that's there I like, and one thing I thought was phenomenally cool about this game is the vast amount of combinations. Look at all those different classes and all those different races that you can have, and they all have special abilities, and there's stuff in here I've never seen in another game. Right, so normally I see the knight and the barbarian, so I got a berserker here. Sure, I've seen that. The tinkersmith. Well, that's interesting. The hunter, yeah, I've seen that before. The trap specialist, well, the guardian, the summoner, the shaman, the wilder, the apothecary, the oracle, the beast master. You aren't fooling around. I got lots of cool stuff here that I can pick from. Then you throw in those races and mix them, and there's just lots of good combinations. I like that, and it's also a fairly easy system to build upon. You know, there's different things, and there's just lots of choices that you have. I didn't mind that they abstracted weapons and things down into the numbers, and I really like that system of leveling up. That's really cool. Going to town, there's so many options, and honestly, they should just give you starting equipment in this game. I'll tell you what, because I sat there at the beginning going, do I want potions? Do I want camping supplies? Um, there's, there's a few things which are way better than others, right? And, and you're not really sure at first, and after some trial and error, I was like, oh yes, having supplies, not a bad idea. And you, it would have been nice maybe if the game had said, this is what you should take on your first time out. Because I didn't know what, they give you money to spend at the beginning. Like, uh, which stat should I improve? Health or this stat? And So that's kind of a tough thing to, to grasp as you get into it. Then there's luck, and it's really weird because there's so little luck in some parts of the games and so much in others. For example, in combat, combat's not very lucky. There's luck in what the opponent does. Other than that, you are literally picking how much energy you spend and what's gonna happen. The luck is in how the enemy responds. And honestly, I'd prefer an enemy that wasn't just random necessarily, but you can see what they're gonna do, and I don't mind that. But when you're exploring, you're rolling 10-sided dice. 10-sided dice! That's huge amounts of luck there. Um, and then you roll six-sided dice to see what thing you come across. Oh, there's a young dragon. Well, we're toast. And that's uh, the thing about this game is you can be toast pretty quickly. It has that talisman thing to it where it's like, kobolds, dragon. Man, I sure hope we run into the kobolds. Once you start building up, once you get past the thing. I played a game where I died almost like three turns in just because I was like, oh, we can take that creature. We could not. Um, and I know that happens in role-playing games too, but you, once you build up, things get rolling, and I think the game goes fairly well when you fight that. I mean, when I get to these big enemies, I got to the, the bad guy king once, and I don't, I don't believe we lasted very long against him. He was just like, vum, 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 and we were gone. But it does give you this, he feels like a final boss, and he is walking around the board, defiling cities, and you're like, we must stop this guy. So there's... There's so much interesting things to say that I like about the game. I like the exploration feel of it. The, there's a lot of dungeon crawl games, but there's not a lot of exploration games, adventure style games. Probably one of my favorites is like the Runebound series from Descent, uh, I mean from uh, Fantasy Flight. And this has a feeling of that. It has a lot of similarities to Runebound, where you're going around the map and going and saying, which quest are we gonna go solve? And slowly increasing our stats so we can fight these big guys. I like math. So the mathiness of the game, even though it's, you know, very bare bones and you can see it in your face, I didn't dislike it. I thought that was enjoyable. I might have liked a little bit less luck when traveling and a little bit more luck in combat, but it still feels like you can do some pretty cool, awesome things. It's hard, and with that being said, as a solo player, I found that it was easier to play with more characters. At first, I was like, oh, I'll just try one character. Nope, that doesn't work. I needed at least two because, you know, you have that balance in the party and it's also easier to fight the bad guys with two. And then eventually I played one game with three, which was even easier than that. Just because I had a bigger party to go along. Yes, you know, one person can still stumble while you're traveling or run out of food and such. 
but at the same time it just felt like a bigger group was more fun. And I imagine that if you're playing with multiple people, there's going to be some discussion over what to do back and forth, but I don't think the downtime's too bad because you're all working together. Like I said in the components, there's a lot. I mean, this box is not that big, right? Compared to Gloomhaven and Descent, this is a fairly small box, and there is a ton of content in here. There's a lot of I wishes they did these things, wishes for fishes type things. I wish there was a, I just wish the game looked cooler overall. I, I, it has some cool story in it, but it, it feels like the story is not always there. Like it's there part of the time and not the rest of the time. And yet the depth and breadth of the system works really well. So at the end of the day, I have to say, what, what do I do? So I'm recommending this game. I liked it. I'd play it again. But with a lot of caveats. I mean, if I'm going to play it with you, one of the two of us better know how to play it really well. And we should go into it preparing that we just might lose. But I think we can have fun with it. I think it's entertaining. It did work really well as a solo game. And if what I showed you sounds interesting, you might enjoy it. If you're a kick the door down kind of guy and slash monsters with cleave and plus two armor, this may not be exactly your style. Well, maybe it is too, right? That, that's the kind of thing. It's, I, I, I can tell just as soon as I play it, it's not for everybody. But for those who do play and do enjoy that depth and maybe don't even mind the lack of pictures and they're using their imagination and stuff, I think that this is getting pretty close to a role-playing game as a board game. Yeah, it falls short in a few areas, but at the end of the day, it makes a very noble attempt and is worth trying out. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved, but not for everyone.